Hello there, this is John V, software evangelist at Jscape, and you're watching a Jscape MFD server tutorial. Today, we'll show you how to set up an FTPS server for passive load data transfers, if that FTPS server is behind a firewall or not. It's never easy to set up an FTP server once firewalls get involved, but it gets even more difficult once you start using the secure version of FTP, namely FTPS. In this video, we'll talk about the problem you'll usually encounter when your FTPS server is behind a firewall and your client is attempting to perform a file transfer using passive mode or PASV. Let me explain. When an FTP client wants to conduct a data transfer using passive mode, it issues the PASV command. Upon receiving that command, the FTP server responds with the server's IP address and the port number on which it wants the client to connect to. This shouldn't be a problem for direct connections, but the moment you have a firewall or NAT router in between, things can get pretty messy. So let's say we have an FTP server sitting behind a firewall. Basically, the FTP server is located in an internal network and has an internal IP address assigned to it. The client, which is outside the internal network, is connecting to the FTP server via the firewall's external IP address. We'll be using the term firewall, but this kind of situation applies to NAT routers, reverse proxies, and other routing devices as well. So now, when the FTP server responds to the pass v command, its response will specify the FTP server's internal IP address in addition to the port number it will be listening on. What then happens is that when the client in turn attempts to connect, it will try to connect to the internal IP address. Since the client does not belong to the internal network, it will naturally fail to connect and eventually time out. In addition, if the port number specified in the response has not been opened on the firewall or routing device, that would also cause the connection to fail. Of course, modern firewalls, NAT routers, reverse proxies, and other routing devices are smart enough to address this particular situation. Once they have identified the conversation taking place as that of FTP and are able to detect the pass v command, they simply assume that the client is going to be connecting back to the FTP server through another port and IP address. They then dynamically open that port to the FTP server in anticipation of the request from the client software. They also modify the response packet to instruct the client software to connect back at the external IP address instead of the FTP server's internal IP address. Once they receive the client's request, they then simply make the necessary substitutions. So here's the problem now when you have FTPS. When the packets are encrypted, for instance with TLS, as in the case of FTPS, the firewall can't examine the packets and so we'll have difficulty determining what ports to open and what IP addresses to substitute with. This is what you do to resolve the problem. In your FTPS server, you need to specify a passive IP address and a passive port range. These settings are going to be used when responding to pass v client requests. The passive IP address should be the external IP address of your firewall, NAT, reverse proxy, or other routing device. In addition, the passive port range should be the range of ports you want the FTPS server to be listening on. But for this to work, those range of ports should likewise be opened on your firewall. To configure this on Jscape MFT server, do the following. Log in to the Jscape MFT server manager. Navigate into the domain on which the FTPS server is running, and then go to the services module and navigate into the FTP slash S tab. Specify the external IP address in the passive IP field. Tick the passive port range checkbox and specify a passive port range. Once you're done, just click apply. That's it. Your internal FTPS server will now be ready to respond to pass v mode data transfers.